everyone. My name is Kia Martin. I'm the owner and founder of Kiari, which is a luxury shoe brand. I'm here with a few students from the Icon 360 Award, where we war awarded it a few HBCUs. Um, so you guys, could you please do a, um, a brief introduction of yourselves? Well, I'm Kenyatta Smith. I'm a fashion merchandising major at Clark Atlanta University. I'm Sydney Mockley, and I'm an apparel design student at North Carolina Central University. I'm Asia, and I'm a fashion design major at Bowie State University. Awesome. So we're just going to get into a couple of questions that we have for you guys. Um, the first question is, well, I attended an HBCU as well, Clark Atlanta University, and I was going back and forth with, you know, which major I was actually interested in. So if you guys could provide your major and what interests you about it. Kenyatta, you can start. Well, my major is fashion merchandising and my interest in it, I realized as I was like going into school, I didn't know what I wanted to study and I was gonna study, you know, just plain business at first, but I realized that my interest really had to do with clothing and the way it's worn and the way it's sold. And, you know, between, for me, it was like, do I wanna do design? Do I wanna try something new? Because I have no experience in design but my experts are not there. Like I can visualize things, I can put things together, I can sell, I can give presentations, all the things that I need for merchandising. I can't draw, I'm not very good at sewing. So it's like using my strengths to like really capitalize on what I'm actually good at. And so that's not to say that I can't, you know, dabble in or take classes in those things. But my major for me is like, I have good control or creative direction, or I'm good at giving a presentation or a speech about something that I've learned in fashion. And so for me, it's like, these are things that I've already been good at and now I can really just become better at them. So like my major for me, it felt like it fit perfectly. Amazing. <laughs> Sitting in. Um, for me, I always knew what I wanted my major to be. Um, since I was a kid, I knew I wanted to go into fashion. Um, so it was more deciding. Uh, I decided on this school and this program because um, we were able to like be so broad with our major. We learn about merchandising and buying and everything. So that allowed me to kind of test the waters and see where I really wanted to go. And I thought I didn't want to go into design, but um, I actually realized I'm a really creative person and I like, um, I've always liked to draw. So this is just the avenue that fit for me. Great. Hey. I'm a lot like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm a lot like Sydney. So mm -hmm. I always knew I wanted to go into fashion as well since I was little. I've been always drawing and sketching and, you know, everything. So I already knew once I reached um, college, that's what I wanted to go into and, being in the fashion design concentration, you learn a little bit of everything. You get to realize how many fields there are that you can go into. So I just like the fact that it's so diverse and I get an opportunity to be creative in any way that I want really. And speaking on like creativity, fashion has changed, especially within the, the last year. What do you guys hope to see in the fashion industry? Personally for me, and I feel like this is a common answer, but it's something that it still hasn't changed enough. I wanna see more diversity in, and this diversity in fashion, but in high fashion. So like we know that um, Jean Kermie Raven was just able to become the first couture, like black designer doing the couture show in France. And it's like, it's 2021, why is he the first one? And we wanna see more. It could have been a couple first, you know, in one show if there needed to be in one fashion week. So I really wanna see us as black designers as black creatives being able to get on the top level because like we're here and we're, our foot is in the door but we're not respected and like put on the top same level as everyone else when it comes to high fashion and I really want to see that change. I totally agree 100%. I was going to touch on that with uh, <laughs> Kirby with Pyre Moss and everything. The fashion show was cool but I'm like why is he the first one? It didn't make any sense to me so I 100% agree. Awesome. Um, so goal setting is important in any field. What's a big goal you have working for your future field? Start with Sydney. Okay, well, I have a couple of goals, but my main one is after graduating um, college, I really wanna work um, abroad. So hopefully in like Italy or France, maybe even Greece um, on the corporate level. Um, 
before I go back and get an MBA or something like that. I think that's an awesome idea just to get the experience and, you know, see how other cultures are, you know, in the environment of other cultures. I think that's a great idea. Anybody else have any big goals? Um, my biggest goal, so even though I do fashion, like I have interest in all forms of entertainment. So I see myself doing fashion for like movies and music videos and celebrities and stuff like that. And so my biggest goal as I get further into my career is to make entertainment and the industry more accessible for people like us. So like young kids who say, I want to be a fashion designer or I want to be a singer or a dancer or whatever it is that they want to do. My goal is to make it accessible, make it easier for them to get into those spaces and to really have the opportunity to follow their dreams like the way that I can and we all can. I love that. Yeah. Just being able to <laughs> You guys hear the feedback? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just things and knowledge. And because, you know, when I started creating shoes, I did not know, I didn't have a factory in mind. I, I didn't have anyone to create my samples. Just having someone or having a connection really helps you, you know, develop your dreams and your goals. So that's really important. Um, another question is, um, what inspires you? Like when I create my shoes, I look in, I look at other women who are doing big things in the world and even just looking at different textures and architecture, different things inspire me. So what's the inspiration for all of you guys? Or well, someone who inspires you? For me, my go-to inspiration has always been Rihanna. And it's, it's been like that since young, but more so recently, because I'm the type of person who has a million projects in mind, who wants to dabble in so many things and I can't keep one focus. And so watching her branch out of what she started in and having a million different projects of all of them being successful and all of them being her image, they're not just her name, but like her image, the way she wants to run them, she still is active in her campaign. She still promotes every single product of hers and she still lives her life and still has fun with everything she does. Like that's always like, I see it and I'm like, I don't want that to be me when right. I want to do everything that I want to do without feeling like, oh, I have to focus on this or focus on that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. What about you, Amy? Um, when you say what things like help inspire me, I like nature. I like looking at nature. Um, or, someone, or someone who inspires you. Yeah. Like, um, but then someone who inspires me, he's a fashion illustrator. His name is Hayden Williams. I don't know if you've ever, any of you guys ever have ever heard of him, but um, just his story and the way that he started with fashion at an early age, just like I did. Um, he has millions of followers now. He's worked with people like Kylie Jenner and um, Bratz and he's had his own collection and stuff. I just like his story and his style and the way he draws. So he gives me inspiration on um, when I'm looking for things to draw or you know, what style people are going towards. I like looking at his work. Awesome. So there are a lot of brands to choose from nowadays. Um, there's, you know, businesses and brands popping up left and right. What are your favorite brands to shop and how would you describe your style? Let's start with Sydney. Um, brands to shop is really hard for me. I my style is very all over the place. Um, I get a lot of my inspiration from like the late 80s, early 90s. And um, I'm a huge like thrift shopper. So I love like, especially during the fall and winter, trying to find those oversized sweaters, begging my uncles to give me their old stuff um, is my main thing right now. Um, but during the summer, it's really hard for me because I love, um, to be really girly during the summer. I love flowy dresses, puffy sleeves. I've been really into like the corset style. Um, so anywhere I can find it is I just grab it and run. <laughs> um, it's really hard to find that type of stuff. I mean, I see it um, on the more expensive level at like House of CB, but um, for my budget, it's hard to find. <laughs> Agree, I love Vincent shopping. And just like things with, you know, texture and structural shoulders, Things of that element, I, I love that that type of stuff. So, what about you, um, Asia? Um, I love streetwear. So, like oversized baggy pants, chunky shoes, anything like that. I love it. It's like kind of casual, but it just gives me, I guess, an empowering kind of feel walking around like that. So, yeah, I like streetwear. Yeah. Um, my style changes a lot. Like I have no consistency when it comes to my style at all. Um, if you know me, you'll see like I change my hair like every three weeks or so. 
and so my style changes with that with like where my favorite brands are it's kind of hard it's thick actually I like I see it I want it I buy it like they just catch my eye and I buy them and then later I fix my style to that but I have like different niches of style just depends the mood so maybe one week I'll wear nothing but black straight and I'll look kind of like oh she must be like on a gothier side and I'll have like you know like cargoes on with chains and all black on and then you'll see me next week and I'm wearing bright pink and I'm like baby pink and really showing off and being a lot more girly so it really depends on like my mood when I wake up but it's like I like to be on um, variety I have to have variety and to, like keep them on their toes with my style that's great hey. so um, my experience at Clark Atlanta was personally amazing um the culture the events the environment the education it was just an awesome experience for me so how was it going to and how has it HBU shaped your experience versus going to a non HBCU I personally love this question because I transferred into Clark Atlanta my sophomore year and so I went to New York City College of Technology and which is a, you know, just a regular um, almost community college and I had a good experience when I was there so it wasn't that I left because anything was wrong but when I got to Clark I definitely had a better one I definitely feel like, especially when it comes to the department and when it comes to my professors and when it comes to the kind of relationships I can build, the kind of connections that I can make, I feel like it's been a lot better when I got here. So I did have good connections with professors and stuff when I was at a non-HBCU, but because everyone in the HBCU is just so much more close-knit, it feels like a family. And I really get to build connections. I really get to feel like these are people that I'm going to know for life, both my classmates or my professors. And it's like, you get certain opportunities. I couldn't be here right now if it wasn't for a professor who decided like, hey, I have a connection with her, a relationship with her, and I want to see opportunities for her. So I feel like I transferred in, I had that transition and it's been nothing but great and beautiful since I did do that. Amazing. Sydney or Avery? Um, um, for I've me, been at an HBCU. Oh, I'm sorry. You wanna go? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I've been at an HBCU the same line for um four years. I feel like it's a family. We everybody knows everybody. The campus isn't that big, but still we're everybody knows everybody. So um I feel like you can be yourself on an HBCU campus. You don't have to worry about anybody judging you. We're, we're comfortable. You can be you um, and express your full blackness, I guess. And then it's good seeing people succeed who look like you all around. You see other creatives out here. We're all striving for the same thing. So it's just empowering and inspiring when you can look at everybody and it's like, yeah, I got you, I got you. We're gonna do this together. Like, so I love my HBCU. Uh, that's amazing. Sydney? Um, for me, I didn't decide I wanted to go to an HBCU until like the very last minute. Um, I had my head set on art school. I got into my dream school and it wasn't until I took a tour here that I decided that this was the place for me. Um, and I don't regret my decision at all. I don't think my experience would have been the same at all um, to have teachers who are really like supportive of, supportive of me and really strive to help you succeed, um, especially because campus, like our major is so small. Um, mm -hmm. We really have a close relationship with each other and our teachers, and it's not really competitive. We're really supportive and jokingly competitive with each other. Um, so it's really enjoyable to just have fun and goof around with them um, all day. Awesome, so that's all of the questions. Thank you guys for taking the time out answer the questions and chat with me today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.